while the S&P 500 is near its all-time high, and some may be predicting that in 2024, it's going to surpass its all-time high and hit over 5,000, be mindful of past patterns and how that's impacted the S&P 500. Aside from the 1980 recession, the other seven of the eight recessions dating back to the 1960s had double-digit drops in the S&P 500 from when the recession started to the low point. Welcome to episode 26 of the Visionary Investor Podcast. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit more about some recession warning signs that I've seen, and I want to make you a little bit more aware of how that relates to the S&P 500 or the overall stock market. Studying recessions for about the past 10 years has given me a pretty unique view on past recessions and patterns that have been seen throughout. I truly feel that in general, the media is making it seem like there's a low chance of us hitting a recession soon. But when you look at the data a little further, and based on predictions from different banks and financial institutions, the estimated U.S. recession probability over the next 12 months, which essentially would run into 2024, has actually dropped based on reports in the past couple months. I really find that to be very interesting. I was recently reading an article from a large bank, and I looked further at this, and they were telling their customers to make sure that they're investing because this is such a great time to be investing. And I'm not quoting them exactly, but I find it so fascinating because when you look at the numbers and you take a broader view at what's going on, things don't look so great. I don't actually love predicting a recession because at the end of the day, I'm not trying to put that energy out there, but inevitably recessions happen, they're resets. And when we look at the numbers a little further, we do see that there are some signs of stress. The Fed Fund's effective rate is sitting at about 5.33%. When we look at the Fed Fund's effective rate from 1962 through September of 2023, without recessions or the time period where the 10-year Treasury minus the three-month T-bill first became negative, so we're not looking at as stressed environments, the average was only 3.86. We're currently at 5.33%. When we look at some other indicators like real personal income, we see that from 1962 through September of 2023, again, averaging out, we're well below the average. Industrial production, similar. There's a lot of strain in the economy. And the reason why I wanted to talk a little bit further about this is because what do we notice? The S&P 500 is actually performing pretty well. From when the yield curve inverted, again, looking at the 10-year treasury minus the three-month T-bill in November of 2022, to the time of this recording, which is November 24th, 2023, the S&P 500 has actually increased, and that's just over a year time period, 18.2%. So it went from 3,856 to 4,559 in about one year. And if we look at the S&P 500 over the past month alone, it's been up almost 11%. And I've recently seen some financial institutions saying they believe the S&P 500 will hit a new high of 5,000 next year in 2020. 75% of the time, or six of the last eight recessions, when the yield curve inverted until when the recession started, on average, the S&P 500 rose 4%. Now, if we look at only those six times, the average S&P 500 increase was 10%. I want to bring us back to what I was saying before. Currently, the S&P 500 is up 18.2%. The largest increase that we've seen over the past eight recessions, and again, I'm using month data, so there may have been intraday highs that are not reflected here. Back in the 2007 recession, the S&P 500 increased 16.5% from the inversion, which was in August of 2006, to when the recession started, which was December 2007. 
the S&P 500 was up 16.5%. We're currently up 18.2%. What's also important to note is what happens after we hit a recession. On average, looking at the past eight recessions, the S&P 500 has dropped 23.8% from the start of the recession to the low point in the recession based on monthly data. If we look at only six of those eight times where the S&P 500 increased from the inversion to the recession start, and we take those recessions and then see, okay, how much in those cases did the S&P 500 drop from the recession start to the low, we notice that it's 25.3%. So what this is telling us is when the S&P 500 is positive from the inversion date to when the recession starts, the drop during the recession is greater than the average of all those past eight recessions. Why I'm sharing this is because I want you to have caution when you're investing during this time period, considering that this specific inverted yield curve that I'm talking about, which is the 10-year treasury minus a three-month T-bill, has on average given us a warning 11 months before the recession started. The range goes from five months to 16 months, and 16 months was the 2007 recession. The warning date was August of 2006. The recession started again in December of 2007, 16 months later. So if the inverted yield curve was giving us a 16 month warning again, we could expect a recession around April of 2024. I do believe over the next few months, we're going to see a shift in economic data that comes out and while the S&P 500 absolutely may increase in price, if we do hit a recession, I just want you to be aware and to know that over the past eight recessions, the S&P 500 has dropped 23.8% from the start of that recession to the low point. Whether you're investing into an index fund, a mutual fund, individual stocks, bonds, it's important for you to understand these patterns because they help inform your investing strategy whether you're working with an advisor or investing on your own. I'll definitely be doing an insight or report on this. So look out for it on the visionaryinvestor.org. And if you want to dive into this further, I do teach about this in the Protect Your Wealth one-on-one -on -one program. You can click on the link in the description below in order to apply for that program. It's very easy to get blindsided by what's going on currently in the stock market. I don't hear many others talking about the recession and I don't hear many talking about the impact of past recessions on the S&P 500. A lot of investors I'm sure are very happy of what's going on with the S&P 500. I just really don't want you to look back in a couple of months or a year from now and say, I wish I had more information. I wish I knew what was coming. I wish I knew about the inevitability of recessions. Aside from the 1980 recession, the other seven of the eight recessions dating back to the 1960s had double digit drops in the S&P 500 from when the recession started to the low point. The greatest drop which we've seen happened with the 2007 recession where the S&P 500 on a monthly basis started at in December of 2007, 1,481 and by March of 2009 was at 735, which was a drop of 50.4%. Now again, this ranges from negative 5% to that max of 50% based on the past eight recessions, and the average being 23.8%. By having the knowledge and understanding these patterns of past recessions, it allows you to better predict where you think the stock market is going and when you have a better understanding of how close we are to a recession or when we're even in a recession, you can understand when there's drops of 5%, 10%, 15 20% or more, how this is related to a macroeconomic environment and take a look further at your individual stocks or your investments to understand and predict where they'll be in the long run. If you couple this with information I shared in episode 25, you'll really have a good understanding of macro and microeconomics, stock market recessions, and value investing using fundamental analysis. 
this is the information you really need to know in order to protect your wealth and create that very strong portfolio that allows you to master the markets, whether it's a bull or bear. So going back to what I said in the beginning, when I was reading about a bank telling their customers to invest, I thought a little further about it and I said, how come they're not explaining how close we are to a recession? Do they truly not believe we're that close to a recession? Or could it be in a company's best interest for you to continue to invest? regardless of whether we're going to hit a recession tomorrow or one year or five years from now, because invested capital leads to higher number of assets under management, higher fees for that company or institution. I challenge you to look at things from a broad perspective and then narrow in and focus on what you're trying to accomplish, because I do strongly believe we're much closer to a recession than most are telling you. And I'm here to show you the numbers behind it and help you analyze the patterns of what has gone on in the past. Because of course the past doesn't guarantee anything for the future, but it allows us to understand what has happened and what could happen again. On top of that, when we see similar patterns in the past happen again throughout history, these patterns can be used to predict what may happen during this next recession. So I wanna wrap this up with saying, while the S&P 500 is near its all-time high, and some may be predicting that in 2024, it's going to surpass its all-time high and hit over 5,000, be mindful of past patterns and how that's impacted the S&P 500. That average drop over the past eight recessions of 23.8% is an important factor to figure into what you're going to or planning to do over the next 12 month time period. Again, as well, given that the average duration from the 10 year treasury minus three month T-bill inversion to when the recession starts is 11 months with a max over the past eight recessions of 16 months when we were in the 2007 recession, this would show that the furthest away a recession may come is in April of 2024. Now, of course, this time, the numbers could look different. Given that we're getting very close to that upper limit, it's really important for you to take a closer look at the economy, at key economic indicators. And again, if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one help with this, please apply to the Protect Your Wealth one-on-one -on -one program where we walk you through this in great depth and give you a much better understanding of exactly what's going on. I want all of you to be able to make predictions of where you think the market is going in the next three months, six months, 12 months, two years, five years, etc. Because by doing this, you'll be able to really look past most of the news that we hear and see and make your own predictions that can align best with your individual and unique goals. Thank you so much for listening. Please make sure to like, rate, and subscribe to the podcast and continue listening everywhere you get your podcasts. Have a great day.